So, last week uh, we took a trip down to Glasgow to the Orbis lab um, to get a bike fit. I've been having some trouble with a bit of uh, saddle sore and foot pain, so trying to get a little pre-season checkup and get things going sweet before the race season kicks off. We've been lucky enough to film our experience, uh, try and just give a bit of an overview of my day in the lab. Uh, and what you could expect if you were to get a bike fit sometime. Be sure to check out Orbis Lab website, the link's in the description below. My name is Nuno Gama, I'm the director and founder of Orbis Lab and what we do here is we provide biomechanical services and physiology services for athletes, mainly cyclists at the moment. So what we're trying to do here is to get you in a biomechanical state uh, that you can produce power efficiently uh, and efficiency means a great deal of power with low metabolic costs as much as we can. But for you, you'll be riding for three hours and on the last hour of the race, I want you to, to, to be fresh in order to deliver those wattages. Well, uh, the way I do things is I look at you, I assess your general condition, uh, range of motions, um, um, flexibility. So we'll do an interview. Um, and this is usually in your clinical history, okay. injuries, uh, pains, issues, etc, etc. Okay. We'll do uh, some uh, testing, okay? So this is where I'll measure things like um, your flexibility, things like any asymmetries that you might have. And then we're going to do metabolic analysis to measure your threshold and then to confirm your threshold by using uh, sub-threshold and supra-threshold efforts. We'll do the saddle fit and then four, We'll do shoe fit. Are you, are you okay? Just doing a, a little real life boomerang. Yeah, a lot. I know. All right. So squat for me. There you go. There's this supination of the feet, and then you lose contact. Yeah, almost. Okay. So all of this is relevant. And squat. Really relaxed. So he's relaxed. I've gone to the extremes here. Yeah, he's really relaxed, and we can see. An angle here, let's say the horizon, and we can see a different angle here, okay? Mm -hmm. So th this type of rotation needs to be accounted in the cleats. So what we call, can you see top? So what we call this is the rotation of transverse plane. This one is less rotating than this one, okay? okay. So what you need to do is lay down, relax, and without the help of your hands, relax, okay? Sit back up. We align the dots of the medial malleolus. Then you sit back up. Okay. Uh, even if with skin slippage, you see that one is a little bit lower than the other one. So with that scenario where my pelvis is, is twisting when I sit up, that would explain why it's the right side where I feel the most pressure and it's the right side where I get a bit saddle sore and numbness because perhaps as I sit up, if that's shortening, it's this is coming off the saddle and one's going into the saddle, or, or, or it might be that I'm then off balance as a result, I'm not sure. But. 
So we we'll have to we we'll have to see with the pressure mapping and yeah. with uh, with the fit because the pain could arise from the fact that the saddle is also uneven. True. Sure. Um, just say, no, that's quite yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we'll have a look. what we do know from this initial assessment is that your left um, leg, these muscles here that put that pull your left leg up, are weaker, mm -hmm. and we also know that these muscles here are in a site of constant contraction. When you're putting power down the pedal, yeah. the vector force goes down this way, right? Mm -hmm. If you have something here that does that, you then have to demultiply this force by the angle. What I've been finding out is that the width of your ischial thoracic mm -hmm. doesn't actually is not a predictor of saddle width, yeah. or it's not a predictor of comfort. Uh, comfort. Yeah. Uh, what I have here is a a saddle, mm -hmm. and what I have here is a same saddle but women's size. Okay. So this is marketed for women. This is marketed for men. Okay. Mm -hmm. The way that the saddle market is today uh, dictates that. A saddle for women should have, should be wider. Mm -hmm. It's a wider saddle, and it should have more foam. Now we know that the width of a saddle is not a predictor of comfort, and it's not a predictor of the saddle that you prefer. Yeah. Okay. So actually, targeting wide saddles for women is wrong. It's just a market. Right? It's marketing. So we should stop looking at it in terms of men and women, and we should stop looking at size as, in terms of what we need. Yeah. So what does the individual need? Bloody hell, mate! Like, comment, and subscribe. Sheila. <laughs> <laughs>